This meeting to order. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We're going to have a roll call. Nelson Riefenack. Here. Robert Hammond. Here. Larry Sear. <coughs> Bina Shade. Here. James Still. Here. Aaron Wilson. Here. Phil Wilson. <coughs> Is there anybody here that wants to bring something before the council? Like to. Um, my name is Kathy Kasner. I live at 128 Green Avenue. I've lived there for this July will be 21 years. <clears throat> First year I moved in there, I had sewage backup. Plumbers out there, plunging traps, burr coming out, plunging traps. Went on every year. Seven years ago, had another problem, sewage backup, and I'm finding things that shouldn't have been in my basement. Shouldn't have been there, especially for me. Well, what happened was they told me my trap was broke. I had to dig up, put all new line in. So we ran all new line from our brand new trap back to our house. At that point, we got it closed up. Very next day, I've got sewage back up again. Now I've got all new line dug up, which everybody knows that's not cheap to have done. So after we did that, the burrow actually come out. They got a snake and they snaked out the lateral. Well, we find out that we're on a shared lateral, me and the lady that lives next door. We're on a shared lateral. So what happened? They dug a bunch out of there. I just had a new furnace put in three years ago, new hot water heater put in last year. I had cold water, I said to my husband. That pilot light or something must have went out in that hot water heater. Go down and we've got six inches of water in our basement. This was Friday morning. Now, luckily, I, my company called off work, called us all off because of the ice. We started pumping out at 11 o'clock at night. At 11 o'clock the next day, we're still pumping water out of our basement. We can't figure out why we have, we're pumping so long. We shouldn't have, we pumped 3,000 gallons per hour with our pump. Here we find out next door neighbor has backage. We're actually pumping the neighbors out. Mm -hmm. So for 20 years now, I have been getting sewage back up from neighbor's house because we are on a shared lateral. But the whole problem is we shouldn't be backing up. I actually called and I spoke with Kim Zimmerman and I thank him so much for getting his guys out there they actually come out, got everything opened up, but they brought the cameras out on Monday. They found out there's a block or a break underneath the road. Today they came out and they dug up. They found a break. But not only that, they also found two main sewer lines. Two main that they didn't know was there. Now we're supposed to be, my house and the very next one, was supposed to be flowing into one. Two other houses down beside me. <clears throat> so they ended up dumping dye down one of their traps. It actually flowed through the one sewage pipe that they found. So we actually got tied into that one now. The old one where we were tied in is capped off. But, you know, you've got all this money right now, grant money for infrastructure. You know, I put out a lot of money over the years, in 20 years, with digging up my sewer lawn when I shouldn't have had to plumbing bills, I'm paying sewer bills that isn't being pumped out in the sewer line, it's being pumped in my basement. You know, I suggest you use some of this money and start fixing some of these lines, these sewer lines, updating. Like I said, there's two sewage lines running down, main lines running down right on Green Avenue that they don't even know is there. I mean, some of the, these things need updated. I mean, it's not fair to put all this money back with it. Homeowners got to dishes out of the pocket. You know, the, the money's out there now. I mean, and like I, said, I spoke with Jim, 
let him know everything was, you know, right now we are tied in. I've got pictures. They actually tied us into the other main line that they found. But it's ter old terracotta pipe. My house was built in 1930. It was one of the, one of, probably one of the first houses, Debbie Bargo, you know. I mean, the school's there. The school was built, my house, the next door. The next house, it probably wasn't built to 1960. So that's probably how that second sewage line got put in. The next house over was built in 1955 because I talked to the gentleman. He's an architect. His grandfather actually owned the house I lived in. His father built that house that he lived in, which would be the fourth house. It was built in 1955. The flood came through when they were building. So this is probably how this extra sewer line got in there, but it's not even showing up on Yunz's maps. I mean, things need updated. Mm -hmm. I've put a lot of money out these, you know, for 20 years now. I mean, I'm finally, hopefully, I'm opened up now. I'm asking, you know, for a, a separate lateral being put in there, which I'm hoping, you know, everything goes through with that. But, I mean, I can't control what other people flush, neighbors. And, I mean, this is what's happened to a lot in Lewistown. Sheriff Lateral was put in many years ago to save money. Well, the homeowners are, you know, it, it's coming back on people like me. And it's not fair. I mean, the guys come out today, the guys that work for the sewage company, they did one awesome job. I thanked them. They finally got a problem fixed that I've had for 20 years now. I mean, I don't like cleaning up somebody else's sewage that's in my basement. I've already talked to Don and, and Ben, and I've already talked to, to Ms. Kastner that we're putting a separate lateral in for her house this spring. It'll get fixed permanently. Just keep in touch with him. I thank you. Oh. Next. Guys, I'm just going to sit this here real quick. And I'll pick it up afterwards um, if you get a chance to go through these photographs. My name is Carrie Coble, and I'm the president of One Dog at a Time, ODAT. We deal with abuse and neglect of animals. Um, we've successfully been able to get one felony case in eight years um, investigated tried and convicted in this town. Um, we deal with the whole state, not just Lewistown. But I've been to council before, it's been a couple years, okay? I deal with the whole state, our, our volunteers deal with the whole state. Our funds are stretched throughout the whole state. I have a couple issues that I wanna address quickly. One is our town, and I don't have the specific numbers, which I'll come up with, but the majority of it is landlords. So it's almost all rental properties, okay? Uh, when I first started this rescue a couple years back, I was contacted right after I started it and asked to come in and talk to council, and I did. And I was approached with, hey, what could you do to help us with the cat issue? Which I think that anyone sitting here can address the fact that I have never been in a town that you drive through and you will see one cat. I don't care if you go that way. I don't care if you go that way. One cat everywhere. It's, they're on porches. They're, they're all over the place. People get frustrated. Well, the cat's peeing in my yard, or pe cat's peeing on my car, stepping on my car. Okay, but nothing is going to get any better unless we attempt to try to do something with that. When council approached me years ago, they said, what can you do? I said, help me. Help me help you guys. Help me help the cats. Help me help you. So what I had suggested was that we be able to get some assistance with a grant. Our organization would coordinate everything. I just need help with it being written. I'm, I'm literally a no one. I don't know people. I'm not from this area. I need help with a grant. If we can get a grant for TNR to be able to do some TNR, it does work. One female cat can have three litters a year. Three. Three. And the litters could range anywhere from one. We had a cat that had 11 kittens. 11. And it's not just about the kittens <coughs> that are running all around this town, okay? It's about the fact that rabies has been detected 
the problem is, is it's not actually, like you don't open up the paper and you see that, hey, there was a cat found in Lewistown that had the roots. You don't see that because they don't, they don't put it out there. Um, the Department of Agriculture who deals with the rabies cases, there's nobody's notified. I mean, isn't that sort of a little crazy when you think about it? Um, I, we think we had a case up on, in Strode's or Ferguson Valley on Big Ridge just recently. We had a cat. It was a stray cat. People were feeding and the cat was fine, friendly, whatever. It attacked a woman. It then attempted to try to get in someone's house. That's indicative of rabies. That doesn't happen with a friendly cat just to, to happen. Unfortunately, that cat was shot in the head and we weren't able to test because that's how they test it. Um, so I want to go back to the landlord issue because the landlord issue in this town is becomes our issue and yes we could say forget I'm not dealing with it but I really don't want to do that um, I think that there's things that landlords could be required to do in Lewistown if they're going to allow people to have pets I mean period you know it would be really great for each landlord to get a photo of the animals that they're permitting in their home with the name with the rabies vaccines, with the fact that the animal would be spayed and neutered, okay? Because here's what's happening in this town, and I'm telling you from experience. I was contacted about, and I will give you one example, where Rex was involved, and I don't know all the details because I haven't spoke to Rex, but I'm gonna tell you what I know on my end. A home was locked up by Corey Confer, who was a landlord. I know he's the landlord, I did the search. It is his property. The property was locked up with several cats on the inside of it. The person who lived there contacted me, scared to death that these cats were gonna starve in this house because he changed the locks. It was not a legal through the court system. Uh, and, and listen, one thing you're not gonna get from me is a lie and I'm not gonna beat around the bush because I'm tired. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> but. They locked the doors, the guy had nowhere to go, he literally texted him and said, you can't come back, I changed the locks. There was no legal eviction, and, and Rex was involved with this. <clears throat> this is what I will say, at some point in time, because we are crazy busy, I deal with an entire state trying to <clears throat> assist police departments in handling animal cruelty. I can't always run, but I can tell you that the guy was so stressed out that he broke the window. So now we have a crime, right? Yep. We have a crime. He's now broke a window to make sure that his cats are fed that are inside that house that he couldn't get to because Corey wouldn't let him in. Okay? Here's where I have the problem. So 10, 1230 at night, I'm on, what's the street? So you're coming through town and you make the right and there's those buildings right there that are a bunch of slums mm -hmm. and nobody can tell me any different. I've been in them. If you've ever smelled them, why those things haven't been shut down, I don't know. I'm guessing that they're friends with whoever decides this stuff. I mean, these buildings, I don't know if you've been in these buildings, but take, take a look. Because we've got that one particular building that's like, there's Salvation Army and that's like three buildings down where people sit outside all the time. And these are people that are being taken advantage of because a lot of them have mental health issues. They may be a little slow, whatever. They're charging them top dollar for these apartments. They're letting them have animals. And then what happens is, is he kicks their ass out, excuse my French, whenever he's not getting his rent or, or wants to hike the rent up constantly, and then they have nowhere to go. So guess what they do? That's the cat you're seeing when you're driving down the street. These are tame, friendly cats, probably not vetted. Three-fourths of the animals in this town, I could guarantee you, lay money on it, are not vetted. Okay, vet care is through the roof. But the pictures that I have provided here, if, if I think it, are just some, Amy, oh never mind. Some of the cats, and it's not very bright. But what did we say, I apologize, Amy, how many cats did we say that we just got together picture-wise today? Oh, um, just, just the pictures of the most severe, I'd say 20, 25. Okay, I can tell you that one of these cats cost us over $1,000, this was just recently. This is a cat where and I'm trying to remember if they were kicked out by Rex or if, the, if they were kicked out by the landlord. The cat was found on someone's porch. Here's a finder. It could, it could be you that found the cat. You can either look the other way, but some people won't do that because it's not really the cat's fault. So you've got a tame cat that can't move on somebody's front porch. What are we supposed to do? 
are we supposed to just start humanely euthanizing, paying $150 to kill it? <coughs> I, I don't think that's fair. So we treat this cat, $1,000 of donated money that we have got to raise. And, and we do that. It's, it's our choice. But I need some help here because these landlords allowing these people to get these animals that then are flip turning around and they're letting them out. And then I have to be perfectly honest, and you know you and I have had a nice long conversation about this whole thing, is when things like this happen, there are charges that can be done, but you cannot get the police to either A, respond to the call, or B, even do an investigation if they do. Okay, and I'm not trying to be rude, I'm, I'm just, I'm, gi I'm giving you as real of a testimony as I possibly can, based on my personal experience. I just had a call about a dog getting beat. I had three witnesses that were willing to testify. The location where the dog was beat, there were supposed to be cameras because there was a business. Okay? So I call an officer on scene. The officer didn't even ask the witness what kind of dog it was. <laughs> Isn't there an investigation to be had here? Because we are talking about animal cruelty. We are talking about abuse, and it is also in the Pennsylvania Crimes Code. It is a law. It is what our police departments are supposed to enforce. And that is what my organization has attempted to try to do to help them for years in this county. I can tell you that this is the only department in the state of Pennsylvania, and I deal with departments all over the state. I've been to court hearings. I've fought with district attorneys to get people revoked. I've done it all. And this is the only department in the state of Pennsylvania that I've called communications and said, if they call you for me, don't call me. Not fair. Because really, does it hurt them? No. It hurts the animals. Okay? I mean, we are willing to say, hey, there's a live animal. It's being beat. If you're willing to do the investigation, you want us to hold that up animal. Because, by the way, they're property. So it's now evidence, which they don't have a place to put in their station. Where are they going to put a live animal? I have officers that take animals home. Home, because this state does not provide those resources. Okay? We just want to get a little bit of help from the community because we are located here. Like, I help animals four hours away. I help police departments four hours away. We've had felony animal cruelty cases that we've had charged and convicted four hours away, you know? And I, I, I just need a little bit of help. So I'm at 12.30 at night down there trapping cats that should have never been kept in that apartment like that. The guy should have been allowed to get his cats. And I've got Rex telling people, at least this was hearsay, that cats aren't protected under the law. But that's not true. And it's, I don't know who the lawyer is here because I don't remember because, of, well, I haven't been here for a while. But it's not true. Animals are considered property in the state of Pennsylvania. So if they shut up that house, okay, a rental property, and the tenant leaves, because they have to, they're shutting it up, they're, they're uh, what's it called? Not evicting, when they condemn it. And this is happening a lot, and it has throughout the years, and I've kept my mouth shut and I just can't take it anymore. But so they condemn a property, there's animals in it. Those animals are still the tenant's animals. They're not the landlord's animals. The landlord can't just give those animals to whoever. He can't sign those animals over to my organization because they're not his to sign over <coughs> unless there is a legal, or a, a legal eviction process where everything in the house <coughs> is relinquished to the landlord, okay? However, that being said, the landlord does have duty of care of those animals, so when they kick the tenant out, and nobody's allowed in the property, there's still animals in there, they have to be fed and watered, okay? Whose responsibility is that? That's the landlord, until that tenant takes those animals out. So if they have to go through the eviction process to get the animals out, that's fine. But I can't take the five cats that are in somebody's apartment building right now because they were told that it's their responsibility to do whatever with these animals. They could get sued for getting rid of the cats. So people are telling people and advising people of laws that don't even exist. The guy that did not pick his cats up at that apartment complex should be cited for abandonment under the PA Crimes Code. He abandoned his animals there. And then we deal with the landlord. You know what I mean? But we're not getting anything cited. 
And it's not for me not trying, and it's not for me not offering, it's not for me not walking in that office down there and asking to talk to people. Okay? And I'm not just looking at him because I'm sure that he's got a boss above him, so it's, is it important to the person above them? And then, is it important to the person above them? And then, is the crime going to be, be even um, followed through with and our charges going to be had as a district attorney to care? So I understand the system, like I understand how it works, but this town and the amount of animal cruelty and neglect and the abandoned animals is absurd. When people can't walk out of their house because their next door neighbor dumped five cats out on the porch and she can't let her dogs out because they're all sitting there trying to get in because they live in a double, you know? And then they want me to come out and get these five cats. Where am I sticking them? Because I can tell you I went to the commissioners and said, please help me. Help me get a building around here. We don't have animal control. We don't have a shelter in Mifflin County. I'm trying so hard. My family is killing themselves to be able to help these animals in the area. My dedicated volunteers are killing themselves. We're running around like a bunch of chickens with, I could, do you, anybody have any money? And, and I'm being honest with you, listen, you wanna make some money in this area? I could tell you exactly what to do. Get yourself a little piece of property and build kennels. Because the amount of money that you could make off of Lewistown alone with the stray dogs in just this town in a week is nuts. It would pay the rent. Because you can charge a fee as animal control. Every single stray dog that's picked up, $50. You give them a vaccine, there's another $30. Each day they're in there, $25 a day. By the time these people figure out when to come and get their dog, it's going to be $300, and they're not going to be able to afford it anyway. So do you know the amount of money that can be made in animal control? It's crazy. So we're doing what we can all the way down to going out at night and helping a police officer. You know, when they've got dogs trying to get in people's houses and, and they call communication and say, hey, Carrie, you think you could come down here? Because this dog's trying to get into somebody. So there's two dogs trying to get in someone's house, right? Here we find out, my husband went out, 1.30 in the morning, we find out there's an unspayed female chihuahua inside the house. Uh -huh. The two dogs that were attempting to try to get in the house were unneutered males. They were aggressive towards the police officers because the police officers aren't trained to even handle them because they're not animal control officers. We know this, right? So within five minutes, my husband has them both in the car. But what would they have done? You know what I mean? Would it ended up with someone's dog that was shot? I mean, it could, and who would blame them? They're not trained. Do you see where I'm coming from? I mean, I realize that I seem a little crazy, but it takes a lot for me to get here. Carrie, when you were here last time, I think that someone had mentioned about, you know, we don't do grant writing here. Correct. And suggested that you go talk to the county and their grant writer. Did you not get anywhere? I did talk to him. What, isn't it? No, yeah, that's not him, no. Who was it? Lisa the guy Stone. in the basement? Lisa Stone. Lisa Stone. Stone. Then no, I wasn't given, I don't think I was given her information. Was I? Who knows? Okay. I'm so busy. But I don't know if you mentioned that you've been to the county and talked to them. I don't know if they offered you that. The commissioners? Yeah. No. I mean, I talked to them. I gave them my little spiel, and I've yet to hear back about Because there is actually a law, okay, out there. It's from the 80s. That 18 something or other that says that the counties are all able to give money to a nonprofit organization who is wanting to do with things with the prevention of cruelty to animals. I'm trying to give you guys resources. I'm trying to give our officers the resources. You know what I mean? We've done microchip readers, catch poles, and slip leads, and if a department doesn't have it, it's not because it wasn't offered, it was because it wasn't accepted. And that's every department in this county. I've made sure to touch base with every single one because if we have a microchip reader out there, they're, they're by law supposed to respond to every stray dog complaint. Wouldn't it be smarter for them to have a microchip reader that they can just scan over the dog? They can call me any time, day or night. They've been given that, I mean, 4 30 in the morning, they can call me with a microchip. I'm going to look it up and we're going to try to get that dog home. They have nowhere for it. And Granville Township's not letting anybody use that kennel over there anymore. And they're, not, they're doing that for a reason, because they were the ones who were, and I'm not saying this is what they said, but I already know, they were the main caretakers of those animals. So if they accepted one from Lewistown or regional or whatever, they were still the ones that were taking care of it until the dog warden could make it here. And just so you know, Missy is buried up to her eyeballs 
in three counties. Okay? And just quickly, before I forget, if you lose your dog, if you are a dog owner, and your dog is not microchipped, and you lose your dog, and somebody picks it up in Lewistown, and let's say they live in Harrisburg, and they're just coming through, and they don't know what to do with the dog because there's not even a shelter to call around here to drop it off as a stray, and they drive it to Harrisburg, and they turn it into the Harrisburg Humane Society. You have exactly 48 business hours to find your dog before they can either A, vet and adopt it out, B, transfer it to another rescue or shelter, or C, euthanize it straight away, do not have to do a behavior evaluation, nothing. My two, two of my personal dogs would never make it out of the shelter. They'd be scared to death. That's not an environment they're used to being in, and usually that's what it is, is fear. But if you're willing, so I'm like, please, I want to have a microchip clinic. Give me somewhere to have it. You know what I mean? We'll give out free chips. I will give out free chips at a microchip clinic in Mifflin County if somebody can help me find a tech or somebody that will put it in, and you give me a location to have it. I want to help the citizens in this town. <coughs> Because by helping them and their animals, it's going to help me. Because I'm trying to do this everywhere. And I can tell you that we're tired. You know what I mean? I just want to help you. If we can get a TNR grant, I know there's probably at least a 10 that I could even just sort of think off of the top of my head that we could get together do some trapping. We would transport. You know what I mean? We're transporting animals from Mifflin County the whole way down to Willow Street, past Lu Lancaster County, just to get them spayed and neutered. There's no resources. COVID has kicked our rear ends. <laughs> What's the TNR stand for? It is trap, neuter, and, and release. And basically what happens when they, and this is why it's important as far as the rabies thing, is they get trapped, they go down, they get neutered, but they also get a rabies vaccine. And what people don't understand is a rabies vaccine, like when you get your dog a rabies, the first year, it's a one-year rabies. After that, it's a three-year rabies. But the thing of it is, is it's the same solution for the three year as it is for the one year. So it's just some protection. I mean, I've ha I had an elderly woman downtown Lewistown call me and tell me this cat was trying to get in our house, like viciously trying to get in our house. That's indicative of rabies. <coughs> if that's, and, and she called the police. Nobody's coming out. Why would they? What are you going to send a gun? I mean, like, really? <laughs> you can send the police officer, but what are they going to do with it? Right? So we were willing to go out and try to trap it safely because you don't want to touch any of it. You don't want to touch the saliva. You don't want to get bit. You don't want to have to go through the series of rabies shots because that's what's going to happen. So TNR is awesome because we're also cutting down the numbers. I mean, we're talking about one breeding female, three litters a year. And that's minimal. I mean, they can do it three. And do you know that a kitten, a female kitten at four months of age can get pregnant? Four months. Four months. It's just... And I realize this isn't the worst problem in the world or the worst problem in our county, but when I'm handing you guys, you guys, when I'm handing everyone and really trying to give you some resource, I just need a little bit of help. You know? I just want some help. Harry, can I like chime in with this a little bit? Sure. I actually did have a problem with, I mean, <coughs> dog. I have a problem with a neighbor that's over on Brown Street. She has a cat. Mm -hmm. She lets it out. Mm -hmm. Where does it come do their business at? Mm -hmm. My yard. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a dog. It actually attacked my dog. Mm -hmm. I, I called the police. They actually cited her really? for allowing, allowing her dog out. Now, I just bought, and I had to put my dog down after 15 years. I just got a little Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Mm -hmm. My little baby. Again, right? They're not, they're not cheap to buy. Right. Now here's this cat back in my yard, okay. but when I look at it, I mean its ears are all messed up. It's been cat fights. I don't know. I don't know what kind of disease okay, it has. Okay, here's the thing. So they knew that was her cat, right? Exactly. They find her. And they find her. Okay. But so here's where the, the law. Comes, but here's where the law comes in. If they knew that was their her cat, and there were witnesses stating that this is the woman's cat that would go to court and testify that this is her cat. So if they've already cited on this individual situation, that is an owned cat. The fact that that woman's letting that cat out, no, there's no straight cat laws, per se, unless you create one for your town, okay? But this is what's going on, is these cats are, so if that cat needs medical care, if this cat is in bad shape, that woman is responsible for medical care, and if she doesn't get it, it's called failure to provide medical care, it's under Title 18, and they can be charged for neglect. So our officers are absolutely able to advise these people and say, your cat, based on what I'm looking at, I mean, we all have a little bit of common sense. You can almost tell. We had, 
We took in a cat that was shot. Shot. This was somebody's own cat. This wasn't a feral that when you trapped it, it like wanted to eat you. It was tame. You know what I mean? So this is somebody's cat that they just opened the door and let out. I mean, I had a cat that lived for 24 years and we tied her on a tether like a dog if she went outside. It's not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah, dear? Why don't you write something down? You're just rambling around and around and around. I know you want money. Well, no, I don't even necessarily want money. You're going to have to get it in order so we know what it is. Right. I, right now, I have no idea what you, what you want. I thought it was money. Now you want something else. So. I, I had approached before about a grant rate, have someone to help me with grants. I wasn't on that count. I know. No, but, and you were given Lisa, Lisa Stalnecker's name. Yeah, probably but, so. Can uh, I get that again? Sure, absolutely. Because this time I will make it a point. I mean, again, I'm, 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 a, whole I'm a whole state, 67 yeah, county. No. What's your phone number, Carrie? It's 717-580-1420. Um, I'll give you a call tomorrow. I appreciate that. One. Four two zero. Seven one seven. Yeah. <laughs> when people ask me if it's scary, I'm like, I don't know. I'll talk to I really appreciate your time, truthfully. Good luck. Thanks for what you Absolutely. And I apologize. I like I had surgery and I have to push everything out so I sound like it's not. I'm not really trying to be one. I'm just happy I didn't cough the whole way through it. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're getting Larry here on the phone. Yeah. Are you there, Mr. President? I'm here. All right, um, hang tight. Uh, we're going to the next thing here, so you're on. Okay. Unless someone else has anything else to talk about. Does anybody else want to say anything before we move on? <coughs> and I will get that list together for you. We're on the consent agenda. Uh, we have a motion to approve all this stuff, all these things. Motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now we're going to go on to the regular agenda. We're going to turn it over to Tim. All right. First thing is the ARPA guidelines projected expenditures. It's common knowledge that uh, it's been hit on numerous times that there's ARPA money out for different all the municipalities and county etc um, the borough got over the next two years is going to get 825 850 about 850 thousand dollars okay so during a finance meeting we kind of just ran through some possibilities for expenditures none of these are locked in unless they're in green on the right hand side um, under public health and safety uh, we're talking tonight in a little bit about the fire department. You'll see that 135,000. Um, one of the things we, that's available for expenditure under ARPA is vacant and abandoned property purchase and demolition. Um, that's one of the things that uh, we kind of just talked about putting some money aside for some of the, the, demol the derelict properties in town. <clears throat> Down here ties in with uh, a subject I'll be talking about here uh, a couple bullets down and what uh, Kathy Kastner was talking about it's fixing some of the sewer lines in inside the borough farther on down here here's some money for the parks this is the one for rec park and these aren't locked in these are just placeholder numbers until the council decides what they if, if they want to do anything with it one of the things the finance committee talked about and it's not recommended for approval it's what we talked about is setting aside uh, some money to give back to the community in the form of scholarships because you can use that money for fighting <laughs> COVID and for, uh, as it says, address ne a negative economic impact for people losing their jobs and families with low income. So one of the things we talked about is setting some money aside over the next four years that the borough would set up a council or a board uh, with members from the school board, or the school, uh, the borough council, people in town, uh, et cetera, that would be the, 
I guess you could say the administrators of that funding with borough council approval. Uh, you know, a thousand dollars per semester for a student or something like that. They have to go through a process of whatever the council, the council or the board sets up. You know, essays, that kind of thing, uh, proving why they need the money, etc. The money wouldn't go to the student. The money would go to the school. They'd have to be a registered, pr provide proof they're registered to the school, and money would go straight to the school. You got to be a full-time student, etc. That's one of the things they were talking about: giving money back to the community. ARPA is not forever. If you look down here on this block here, you see that it's, uh, it's got to be committed by December 2024, so two years, and obligated and gone by December 26. So we'd have about four years to spend it all. Uh, and we're not in a hurry to do that because we have a lot of uses for it yet. Any questions on this before I go to the next subject? Can that be used on the streets? Say again, Heavy? Can that be used to pay the streets? It can be used for infrastructure or streets if it has to do with COVID. In other words, you got a clinic and they can't get to the clinic because the road's really bad. Or if it's part of a tax base or something where you, you're affected by a negative impact on inflow of money that was going to be used for something like a street project. So for right now, the answer would be no because it doesn't apply to anything in the borough. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I understand where he's coming from, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very strict guidance on this. Next thing, number two, fire department consolidation. I'm going to leave that for the fire chief. He said he wants to talk about that when he talks at his borough report. Inflow and infiltration data. Okay, this is something that uh, I think we need to take a serious look at. This has to do exactly what Kathy was talking about again. Um, when you look at, uh, let, me, let me rotate this. Okay, if you look at the blue line on there, that's like our normal rainflow, rain, rain flow, rainfall with the flow of the sewer lines. And then you see the big increase on here. That's the latest rain event. What that is, is storm water infiltrating into our sewer systems. Okay, that's bad. That's why the houses are backing up in the basements in town, because we're getting too much water in our sewer lines for it to be handled and, and the normal process of flowing out to the sewer plant. The other piece on this that's an issue for us is all that increase in water means it's more, more uh, liquid sewer going into the sewage treatment plant, which means it increases our cost to treat it. So whenever this water goes into the sewage treatment plant, that's more cost to the borough, and that's a lot of money. It's tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Um, that's why we need to take a serious look at this. If you look at chemical usage on here, you see the rain flow and the, the precipitation over time. You can see how much uh, it is an increase in those chemicals. And I did the math with, with Don earlier. And it, it, bottom line is, I, I forget the word, but it's a lot of money. I mean, it's like tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. That's why we need to take a serious look here in the future on repairing our lines. If you go back to the ARPA budget, this piece right here, the slip lining for 6th Street is $150,000. Um, that's one of the things we want to use some of the ARPA money to try to fix some of these sewer lines in town. And Don and I will put together a plan for the council here in the future for you to look at. This is kind of an FYI for you right now. Parking meters. Uh, there's been discussion about parking meters in town, uh, upgrading the ones we have. We got about 800. Um, they want to move to a parking meter system this is in conjunction with the parking authority as well of moving to like a quarter base uh, hour at a time kind of thing but it's five hundred dollars to replace one parking meter to go to the new system which is digital which takes an app or a credit card you know you swipe it or whatever it's about five hundred dollars a parking meter if you want a kiosk type parking meter it's about ten thousand um, dollars and that's what the parking authority would be talking about doing in their parking lots this is just FYI for now because it's the first initial cost factors they've been able to find. Um, if we have 800 meters in town, you want to replace 800 meters, that's $400,000 um, to replace the meters. Um, not saying we're doing that, it's just, this is just the initial information for the, for the, for the guys here, the ladies and gentlemen here. All right, let's talk about contract negotiations for our union, FYI. Their next contract negotiations are scheduled for the 17th of February and the 24th of February. Employment opportunities. Just go through this real quick. 
Let me go back to the agenda so you guys see the agenda. Okay, just, just FYI, summer interns. Last year we didn't have summer interns. We're looking at doing some summer interns this summer between May and I believe September, which is in accordance with the ASME contract. Um, they're going to be very helpful for us. Uh, we did talk about this with the personnel committee. I'm not asking for any concurrence or anything now. It's just an FYI that we think it's a good thing to bring them back to the borough to help for the summer. Deputy DT, DPW, we did talk about that. We're going to talk about that later on. Uh, that's the direct, Deputy Director of uh, Public Works. The wastewater treatment plant maintenance technician, um, that is also open. We got a bunch of applicants for that. Street sweeper working position, that's open. The working position is open. And the mason working position is open, but it's out for internal bid right now, so it's not out for public hire yet. The pool manager uh, just resigned, uh, but, but I believe we got a possible uh, pool manager already possibly lined up that's already a, an employee of the borough. She's, she's interested in it. The zone hearing board vacancy. Um, that's something we have to move forward on. We just haven't done it yet. We have to get that advertised. Uh, and pending the borough manager's report, that's what I got for this section, if they have any questions. Okay, next is fire chief. Fire chief, you're on. You want to come? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for the month of January, the fire department ran 43 alarms, which consisted of uh, two miscellaneous fires, four building fires, a chimney fire, 16 medical assists. Uh, the reason they're kind of high for the month is we had crews on the stations for the uh, ice storm and all that kind of stuff. And any time an ambulance responded in their area, we sent a piece of fire apparatus with the furnished pan power to get the walks cleared and everything else for them. Uh, we had two motor vehicle accidents with uh, injuries, two with entrapment, which took extrication, and we had uh, our usual three gas leaks. We had a carbon monoxide incident, a police assist, public service, and uh, smoke odor investigations. We had three of them and five automatic alarms. At the last uh, council meeting, I was asked for an update on the uh, consolidation between uh, United and Brooklyn Fire Company. I didn't have uh, much information for you, but uh, tonight I have Assistant Chief Sean Markley with me. He's been working internally with them. So Sean's gonna come up and give you a report on the progress of the uh, consolidation. Everybody behind you does. <laughs> All right. uh, so I asked, Abby Aspie, some of you may know Abby, to provide me with the, what, what you're asking for. Uh, Brooklyn and United have been meeting with Rob Brady, the consultant, since November of 2020 to work on merging the two stations. Uh, over the past two years, the two stations have worked together to establish bylaws, SOPs, budget, a lease agreement for the bar, social club SOGs, social club bylaws, social club, social club budget. Uh, the goal was to make everything as simple and easy as possible for a clear separation between the Brooklyn and the Social Club. The merger is broken down into two parts. Brooklyn's bar becomes its own entity. Brooklyn merges into United, becoming one station. Uh, the merger plan outline was established fundamental needs, bylaws, SOGs, budget. Brooklyn will separate assets between the bar and fire. The bar will become its own entity, keeping the Brooklyn's current EIN number. New name is to be determined, but for now it is referred to as the Brooklyn Social Club. Brooklyn's fire side will be merged into United Fire and Rescue, followed by a name change of United to the voted and accepted new name. Uh, the timeline as it stands now is all documents required for foundations are completed as of January 2022. The draft lease agreement is being updated February 2022. The plan of merger vote for each company will happen in March of 2022. Each company will vote to officially merge. Brooklyn will vote to separate the bar from the fire assets, and documents will then go to the state and attorney general at a time to be determined. Uh, if any more information, you can contact Abby Aspie. Her email is on here. If somebody would like this, sure. I'll get copies so everybody else get a scan. I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's all I have as of now. So you think it's going to be done in March? 
Uh, They're voting on it. The, the voting the voting will be done in March. Um, I just spoke with Abby today and she said that at the very earliest, and, and this is just really a, a rough idea, the very <coughs> earliest of any uh, total consolidation would be uh, three months out at the earliest, probably longer than that, hopefully by the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of the year. Well, you started this two years ago. It's not something that happened. The, the biggest thing is the, is the social club. If it were just two fire companies without the social club, it would probably already be done. But that's that's the whole. So the social club is holding it up. Well, it's it's just there's a lot more to do because of the social club because of keeping the so social club. We, so why do we keep the social club? That's you would have to ask the members of each station. Not, well, not no, just I'm, I'm asking I mean, you why we keep the social club for Brooklyn down there. Social club pays well, the bills. Yeah, the social club is and actually the. The lease agreement that the, that they're working on was it's actually profitable for the fire company. Well, not not so much profitable for the fire company, but the bills that they're going to pay makes it easier for the fire company. Right. But it's the whole separation that's taking the time. So I, I think with as long as the the last numbers I heard on the on the lease agreement with the with the, the social club, what they're going to pay is a you know it's a real nice chunk of change that the that the fire company won't have to pay then for utilities. Oh. They haven't been doing that all along. I, I don't know. I got some I'm issues not, here. <laughs> well, but I'm not from. Well, and I'm not from the Brooklyn. Okay, my my Your years United. have been from United. Okay. So right. as far as what happened at the Brooklyn up until now, and and I've only sat in on some of the meetings. I'm trying not to get too involved yeah, in it. I got it. Um, it Kevin, <clears throat> just just some backstory for you there. I mean, I think that. Yes, the social clubs have supported the fire companies, but it's been, like you said, they haven't been doing it. There's been questions as to, it was never clearly spelled out as to who was paying what and how much. That's, that's what I was And that's yes. what the separation between the two, between the social clubs and the fire departments, was hopefully to get at that you didn't want to do away with those because, yes, they do provide monies to the fire departments, but we wanted some clear delineation of how is that occurring and where is that money going so that was why yeah, I agree. Plus, that was all done and some of that time that i said about i said the paperwork has to go to the state so right who knows how long that's going to take I mean, they they ultimately have to approve everything after that stuff after after the both companies voted on it and the paperwork sent so like i said i'm sure by the end of the year definitely uh, abby said three months maybe longer so Three months you're already into. By the end of the year, that's the well, months you're three months you're already halfway through the year. So, yeah, I, I personally hope it's a lot sooner than that also. So that's, but that's one company. Um, city was supposed to be separating as well. Where does that stand? Do you know? That yeah, yeah I can address with oh, okay. Captain from from the city. Okay. Um, I understand. Real quick before he takes over, I understand that you need something from Lewis on Borough, correct? Paperwork wise. He has no idea. I'm not sure. Like okay. I said, I just got. So I was asked. You just need support from Borough Council, essentially, right? No, Bur 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 Council was the one that kind of oh, got the ball rolling yeah, on the consolidation the years ago. Yeah, oh, this was kind of brought on by Borough Council. Right. Okay. And we're, Three years you know, ago. The, yeah, the United and Brooklyn are doing what council asked for quite some time ago. Yeah. So, anything else? I guess I look at the end of the year date. Um, we're all, we're looking at one hundred and forty-five, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be divided by three stations to help to offset your expenses and carry you through. Right. That was what was brought. To finance, right, Bob? Right. You know, and we were and we were looking at relatively, I won't say quickly, but t more timely. Now we're looking at the end of the year where that money is going to be divided by three, rather than by two. Right. Uh, that's why I, I guess I kind of look at the end of the year date as. A as I said, I, I just threw that out there. Uh, as I said, we're looking probably somewhere between the middle of the year to the end of the year. Yeah. All right. Like I said, three months was at the earliest, so you're already at the middle of the year there. So somewhere, 
I, I don't want to give you, I don't want to tell you, yeah, in four months it's going to be done because yeah. I don't have that answer. We're moving along at, <clears throat> as fast as we can, basically. The consultant has actually been quite happy with the progress that's been made, so. And I, and I can say there, uh, the, the two stations so far have spent roughly twenty thousand dollars just in just in the merger. So it's I understand it's, it's not gonna happen overnight. But your your question is are we gonna divide the money between three or two? Yeah. Right. Right. It's it's be far more advantageous to two companies than three. If you're already struggling to pay your bills at the end of the week. Agreed. Right, but also rushing in something before everything's done. And, right. You know, every I, I think you'll get an answer after you look at bullet number six on the new and unfinished business. That's what's going to kind of draw the trades uh, and pull down here. When we oh, get to that area, right. we talk about the audit. The auditor called <laughs> or emailed me today, and they want to begin the fire department audit on the 14th of February. Uh, so it takes about a month, so that audit will we'll be a deciding factor for the council at that point in April. Where we need to divide it up. Uh, let's see there. It, it, Is that all of the fire department? It's not up to yes. the borough to divide that 145. Their their request was we want 145 thousand dollars, and then we're gonna we will divide it up. 45 thousand per station is what they're right. That's correct. 135 thousand, and that's where the council is going to vote on that tonight for the 45 thousand per station. Now, however, the fire department used it. I mean, that's obviously with with the leaders of the fire department. 45 thousand, but with the audit coming in February being completed by March, you should know by April with the audit and with their status what exactly is going to be happening and what their financial status is for the fire, hall, fire halls, all of them, the fire department. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just yeah, uh, considering the expense angle, do we know who owns the actual structure? Is it the, Just the social member, clubs? The memberships. The social clubs? The club overall memberships. The membership. Every dues paying member. Every dues paying member owns the real estate, so it isn't separated social club versus fire company. Right, it's all one EIN. Nice. Okay. Who owns the United Building? It'd be the United membership. Yeah. Yeah, that was given us by the church. Part of part of it was given by the church, and part of it was given by the borough. Yeah. The new, so the new addition, the new the, the property where the new okay, addition is back up. in '94. <laughs> United was a consolidation in 1994 between the Fame and Henderson. Uh, the, the part of the building was this direction. Okay. Was that property was given to them by the borough at that time to build the addition? It's my understanding that would, if something happened, would go back to the borough, and I don't know about the rest of the building. Well, Brandon, wasn't it? It was my impression that we. <coughs> made some agreement that that would come back to the borough some way somehow there was there was chatter but we never there was never any i mean we sit we talked about it but there was nothing ever any paper you know because we weren't sure what was going to happen right yeah there still has so. to be in my opinion one yes vote down there that has to happen before any of this falls into place okay you know so uh would i be open to a discussion absolutely you know we can sit and have discussions i'm i'm for that you know, whatever is going to be better, and we can make this work. That's fine by me. Right. Yeah. If I could just maybe help clear something up. Can you the, come up here so we can? Yeah. Thanks. The the number on the one thirty five there on the second page, that was discussed to be ARBA assistance. Correct. To be split by a three. Correct. For the year of twenty twenty two. Correct. The discussion of <coughs> taking it from three to two was from 22 on out <coughs> allocations based upon the audit findings to see where that would benefit, non-benefit, to go from there. So we actually have two separate. They are proposed to assist the fire company for the loss of 2022. Then what we're talking, like I said, the, the three to two was budgeting from 23 on out. You know what I mean? To try to help verify that. Yeah, no, you're right. The budget, the, the yeah. audit is basically get a point, a direction for the borough. With, when for the allocation. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yep. the ARP, I just want to, to verify we have the ARPA <coughs> assistance to split by three. Correct, it is. And then the allocation, 
potentially three to two to make it a, a better split versus a third, a third, a third. Does that make sense? Yeah, we can have, I can ask our auditor to do the research on that to provide a recommendation on yeah. the finance split in the future after yeah. all that. The, the, the ARPA is to really help pay tomorrow's gas bill, tomorrow's electric bill, not necessarily the allocation for the year. But can you give us an update on where the city is yeah. in the separation? Yeah, so right weeks before COVID hit, we had met with Kim Hauser on a conference call. He was going to be the city's attorney to go ahead and move forward separating the club from the fireside. Minimum fee of five grand. They had announced they're already at 20. We were looking at that too. So COVID hit, now we're passing the hat and selling extra hoagies. <coughs> that project stopped until we can get our heads above water. So that's where that's at. The, the city club and the city fire is all one EIN. So to try to get the state in any time quickness is definitely a delay. The attorney fees, the lawyer fees. So to answer your question, that project stopped right when COVID hit. We got bills to pay versus lawyer fees. We, we're totally on board with the separation of the club and the fire side, but what do you do? The heat bill or the lawyer fees? Were you guys further ahead in that process before COVID, or what? Because the, the wheels were kind of in motion. Yeah. Um, that because on a consultant's report, when the consultant came in, um, his overall suggestion was uh, the Brooklyn and United come together because one. The city downsized the fleet and kind of stayed in the building. The theory was the clubs would be in the background, sort of kind of helping. COVID proved now that people aren't going out, people are staying home, the fundraisers have tanked, and that's where we're at. So the clubs four years ago that were sort of supporting, and the audit's going to kind of pinpoint that, are they still supported? But when John sent the auditor or the consultant. consultant come in here, his suggestion was let's go to three to two. And I believe those wheels were pretty much already in motion prior to him saying three to two. But you know, since then, the city has sold the aerial truck, updated the rescue just like he had on that on that report. So getting stopped was spending thousands of dollars of attorney fees when COVID hit. And to add to that, United also downsized a piece too. They sold a rig also under the consultant's recommendation. So they've been following his. And just so I understand, hey, Chief, and Chiefs and Chiefs, United is still a viable, active fire department, yeah. fire hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so even though you're talking to merger and stuff, it's still a full fledged active fire department. Sure. So yeah. you still need the 45,000 sure. yeah. 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 until all this goes through. Yeah. Until yeah. next year, we get all okay. Yeah, and that forty-five thousand is going to help keep us alive. Yeah. Until they get their answers, until we yeah. can, you know, <clears throat> come back into the our separation. United, United is also in the process of paying for a truck that has to be replaced under recommendation of the right. consultant. Also, so they, they well, that wasn't and, just and that was that, the recommendation of the consultant. It desperately needed to be. That was a band -aid. And, it was still, <laughs> and that was still just another band aid. Uh, the, the latter right. one. You know, we replaced the right. 1994 ladder truck with a 2004 ladder truck, so it was just a Band-Aid. Right, um, right. Yeah. Band -Aid. Ult ultimately, that still needs to be replaced. Yes, yes. Nothing's being spent out there that's not needed. Uh, believe me, some of this stuff should have been replaced years ago, but it got to the point it had to. Now it caught up with us at the same time, like Ryan said, the COVID hit, fundraising's down. And we definitely need help. There's no good thing about it. Yeah. We're going to get you help. When we get there, we're going to get voted on. Thank you. Thanks. Let's see. Uh, Mayor? Uh, I really don't have uh, much to report uh, this month, but I did want to mention to you that um, all the residents are back in their apartment at uh, Kish no. Apartments. Um, there are several of the apartments that um, need carpet and that sort of thing, but the, at least uh, the residents are in there. What they've done is they've set aside a couple of the empty apartments, made them livable, so that when it comes time to go into uh, do the carpet and actually finish the apartment, 
they can move over to this uh, vacant apartment. So then they're, they're close to their belongings and it works out a lot better. It's easier for the um, directors to keep track of the residents. So um, things are sort of getting back in shape there. <laughs> There's still some, uh, a few issues that have to be taken care of, but it's much, much better than it was the last time I reported. So I'm glad for that. But other than that, <coughs> anything else? It's good news. Police Chief? Okay, our stats for January, uh, 385 calls for service that the officers responded to, uh, 24 traffic citations, 18 non-traffic, and 18 written warnings. Uh, we did our civil service testing uh, on the 16th of January, the written portion and the physical fitness portion. Um, we'll do the oral portion of that testing next week, so uh, next month we should have a finalized list of candidates for civil service for officers. Um, we're looking into a countywide RMS system for all the local law enforcement agencies in the county. Right now we're all using the same software, but we're all in separate systems. So we'd like to combine that into one system so that we can uh, get data from, from the other departments. So, you know, officer safety thing and, um, you know, I know we're all dealing with the same people. It's just right now we can't see if they're dealing with the person you know, and we're dealing with the same person because they're separate systems. So we're looking at combining that. There's a grant that we're applying for for that $250,000 grant. It's due in March. Uh, Lisa Stonemaker's working on that, and uh, there's no, there are no matching funds for that. So, be, you know, hopefully, we get that and we can get that system up and running. But uh, that's all I have for now. Corporation award. We did have a quorum, we did have a meeting, so I can show you the draft meeting minutes. Um, basically, uh, we talked about the, uh, the ball field usage for this summer, um, the issues with the geese. Uh, there's a lot of geese down there, so um, it's one of the issues i got to reach out and do some research on. Looking for some poll stats for the summer. Um, Victory Park, we're still waiting for estimates to come back. I know Ben's guys are working on that. Uh, we'll probably have something here another month or two. Mural painting is on hold because uh, the, the Penn Dot Bridge down there is. Uh, I sent some issue or sent some pictures to the uh, head guy at Clearfield because it, it's falling apart. The, the mural blocks are coming out of the wall, mm -hmm. and the issue there's a support beam in the bridge directly above it. That's which is well, they're worried about it. So the engineers are not worried, but they're concerned. They got to take a look at it. So our our project on the mural wall is on hold until Penn Dot does what they got to do. This is stuff we talked about, the CDGCB park up on Catherine and Walnut. We talked about that. Talked about some bicycles that uh, are on at the uh, warehouse that we're possibly going to look at donating to some kids later on this summer. Positions that are opening the borough. Talked about possibly doing a breakfast with Santa or something on December 2022. Uh, we still have to talk to the fire department, police department, EMS, that kind of thing to see if we want to do a joint thing where we, we reserve the community center down there and do a breakfast with Santa for the kids kind of thing. Uh, we got that date set aside for December 10th. We're not letting anybody use it until we have our meetings and discuss it. And we talked about the ARPA stuff. We just gave an update on what's going on with ARPA. That's the record meeting. <clears throat> yeah, the ordinance to consider for adoption tonight. This is the one that was actually approved or directed to advertise uh, last year and it has to do with essentially changing references from Lombardi Way to Lombardi yeah. Circle yeah. in the uh, street sweeper ordinance and another location in, in your ordinances. It's been um, posted and advertised and it's ready for uh, consideration today if anybody wants to make a motion to adopt the ordinance. Basically, basically, it was just an update of some of the streets and some yeah. things like that. It's a street mm -hmm. schedule. The schedule, okay. I'll make a motion. We adopt the ordinance. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Vote. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention is we got a request for a liquor license transfer from outside the borough into the borough. <coughs> Um, the borough has to have uh, give these people an answer within 45 days. What I would propose doing, if it is already the council is scheduling 
a public hearing, which is required under the liquor code, for five o'clock before the, the next council meeting. So 1700 on 9 March is the be, be the public hearing. Um, usually what we've done is ask the uh, applicant to contribute for the, it has to be advertised twice, to, for the advertising and the um, court reporter fees. If you want me to request that of the applicant, I'll, I'll certainly do so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, then we'll, we'll, I'll get it scheduled. Do we need to make a motion or anything for that? I don't think so, okay. because it's kind of just. Is this still an existing business? Yeah, business yeah. You're not voting for personnel or contractor money. You're voting just for a process, and not not voting. Right, just yeah. discussing process. So we wanted to vote on it, okay. and it doesn't okay. have to be voted on to get on the agenda. <coughs> that's what we're on there. So, yeah, plan to be here at five o'clock. Who's liquor license is it? It's a Pennsylvania liquor license. I think it's John Panizzo and Panizzo Management. What they're requesting is to bring a full liquor license from another, from Derry Township, I believe, into the OIP, um, and then the OIP, they have, I think, a, like a beer, a beer only a beer. license. And they want to put that in That would go into safekeeping. Wow. So the practical difference would be that you would be able to order, like, uh, liquor or wine there, in right. addition to beer, I guess. He briefed me on today when I went down there. So he'll take his beer one, put it in safekeeping, bring the liquor one over, and then he can serve, you know, harder stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, MCMA board vacancy. The only written request I've had to be placed on the request on that that position is Lonnie Griffith, and I've not received any from anybody else. Did we advertise it anywhere, Kim? We got the email on it, and I don't think we advertise it anywhere now. We didn't put it on our Facebook page or on the Borough website. No, I guess that's no. not our job to do, is it? I guess it is. It's, it's, it's could be. It. I mean, we, we just yeah, technically recommend it to the county. They're they're the actual appointing authority. Right. So, what was your what you say, Nelson? No, I was just saying that it's our representative, so it would be. I guess it would be our place to to advertise to that. advertise it. Yeah. Give any borough employee or borough citizen. Resident, right. Yeah. Do you want me to put it in the sentinel? I don't know. That's costly, but um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, website. I don't do Facebook. We don't have, I, we don't have We access. have the account. I won't mess with it. Sorry. <laughs> I won't mess with Facebook. <coughs> I've seen what it does to people. You've lived it. I guess that brings Facebook. up the question, who's, who's, controlling our Facebook page. Apparently no one is. <laughs> no. That's it's probably not gone anywhere. I've not on too much anymore. Yeah, when so Jen left, you. she I think she gave me the passwords and all that stuff. I've done zero on Facebook. I won't do it. I won't touch it. I won't mess with it. Maybe Colby Geyer's taking care of it. I don't know that don't answer. Know. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I definitely think that We can that's, put it on the website. I think the website, I, I don't know what anybody else's thoughts is, but and nothing against Lonnie and that he wouldn't be good for that, but I, you know, I think Shouldn't other people be aware of it and be given the opportunity to serve? It's not like the zoning hearing board where that's strictly a borough entity where here we're talking about. Right. I think you have to be a borough resident, right? Yes, you do yeah. have to be a borough resident. So well, I guess actually we're a property owner. Or a property or owner. A bit like a business owner. Yeah. Borough, yeah. Is the Sentinel here tonight? No. 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 Ever? No, just tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got to call. I got to call the editor after the meeting tonight and give him an update of what we discussed. So maybe we could have that in our update that you know we're looking for someone that either lives in the borough or owns property Free to up. serve on the. And I guess they would just contact you, right, Kim? Right. Okay. I'm sure the MC, yeah, the the MCMA has guidelines or <coughs> requirements. As to who can sit on that board, am I right, Mark? They do. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they are, but it's probably yeah, pretty yeah. much very similar to what yeah. it was. It's prior. their board. They right. would. The the Authorities Act really says it would have to be it would have to be either a resident of the service area or a property owner of the service area. 
I don't know what any additional um, requirements they might have on their own. And I, like I said, I received his his request up here, so I have it. It's also in the, in the council file. Did, sorry, did you guys want to read that? Okay. It's on the protected. Right. So right. protected file. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It is. All right. Loan data. The loan payoff. Mifflin County Regional Police Park payoff. Okay, this one the finance committee discussed. The bottom line is the payoff right now is one hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, seven hundred thirty-five thirty-one. Um, right now we're paying over eight thousand dollars a year in interest on this loan um, the the uh, finance committee recommended to the borough council that they just pay this loan off with general funds and be done with it and save eight thousand dollars a year in interest Makes sense to me. <coughs> motion, motion. Second. Second. all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. <coughs> Next issue. Make sure I got there. Cell phone provider chain to <coughs> T-Mobile. The finance committee discussed this, and I got my notes here somewhere. It was roughly eight, less than eight hundred dollars a month for service, versus AT&T was over a thousand, and Verizon was over two thousand. So by moving to T-Mobile service, we'll save over two thousand dollars a month. Now, we will get new cell phones with this because our cell phones are like iPhone 5s or something like that. Um, but the cost of those phones will be made up over that 2000 a month will be made up in a couple months and it will be free and clear. Um, and then we'll be saving over $2,000 a month. So I would like to have a motion that we move over just to T-Mobile. Not a dollar figure because that can fluctuate. So you just want to move over to T-Mobile for our cell phone provider for the borough. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Another item that came up for the Finance Committee was the third tier uh, refuse tag, packet, tier, whatever whatever the word, third tier, I guess. Um, right now there's one, I believe, for 40, one's 50, and then now they're looking at doing one for 60. Let me find it in here because I got it in here somewhere. Yeah, 40, 50, and 60. There you go, right there. And this is what you get for the different tag, 40, 50, 60. So if you look over here, this is what you would get for the tags and stuff. So basically, for the cost and fee schedule, we would go to a third tier at $60 per quarter, and it would be these tags. The, the committee uh, request or recommends the council approve it. Motion? Second. All in favor? Who made the motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make the motion. Who made the motion? Oh, okay. Second. <laughs> Exactly. Let, let me give a, a little bit of clarification. The, the graphic there shows three bulk and... No, I'm sorry. It would always be the three bulk. Correct. No matter what. <coughs> That's all you ever yeah. did. Because we talked about adding, that. Adding, adding bulk stickers and stuff. But, so for the $60, it would be the 39 tags and a three ball. This for big families. we got some big families in the area. And that will go in the cost and fee schedule. So once we go to that process, we'll vote on that, but this will be included in that. Let's move first and second. Right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All, right. <clears throat> All right, we just talked about the fire department audit. The auditor contacted me this afternoon, said they're ready to execute on 14 February. It takes about a month. Uh, the cost is about $7,500. I think it'd be well worth, uh, well, well money, money well worth spent to get a, uh, an idea to help in the fire department and what we can do financially for them and where they stand. I don't think we've ever done an audit on the fire department, so this is something I believe needs to be done. I think we should do the fire department. Just one, one question on that. You are involved in that kind of stuff. Yeah. What, what, when you do an audit for a fire department, right? you, you guys are fantastic with the stuff you do. I don't understand what, what do we hope to find or what do you gain by that? What, like, what, what does that gonna lead us to recognize or understand if we don't already know? That's a, that's, that, that's a good question, Mark. Yeah. It's what we don't know. That's why you do an audit. Okay. Um, we, we don't, we talked about this is, 
and I know the fire department guys in my office, not as a point and finger, but hey, where do we stand? Because they need help. So it's going to help the council decide how much they can help and what they need to keep the fire department going. That's the purpose of the audit. Find out what we can do to help them. Because right now you really don't know. You know, you're going to give them the 45000 to help for the year, but what they really need to know in the long run for this. Okay. They've never done audits. No, we've so never done an audit. <coughs> they get a structure. I mean, how we do an audit, and every year they'll be able to follow that and keep their department on top of things, just like a business else. doing an inventory. Like audit. the borough does every year. It's a very good question. Well, yeah, well, yeah no, it just sounds like we have some good people that really have a, oh, good, a good handle as to what you guys need to know, what your expenditures are. You guys do 90 some fundraisers in a year. Sounds like you guys have a fantastic grip on what's going on. I don't know what paying seventy five hundred dollars for an audit to, auditor to come in and say, "Aha, this is what we're really missing." But that's where my I'm just perplexed as why well. throw that kind of money out there whenever we're, you know, that's. <coughs> well, if well, you guys say you need it, it's really going to help you, and look, it's going to it's going to benefit us, and we're going to produce a lot of savings, and we're going to see a lot of, you know, it's going to be a lot of light bulbs come up. I get it. I see it. I think it would be fair for them to do an audit so them guys know where they're at so they find out somebody's doing funding with the money. They'll find that out. Or cost savings. Like you're cost talking savings. Cost, right. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. The fire truck, the fire plate, or they're in favor of doing it. Mm -hmm. The fire department. Yeah, they have no problem. They, they want, want to do it. Do it. They want right. to do it. Would that include the fire relief also? Uh, if it's part of the fire department, we can ask them to include that too. It should be probably part of it. They can audit it here. Yeah, they can audit it here. Relief Association can audit it by the state. So we won't need to do that then. It's just internal. It's all one year. Yeah, it's all one year. Yeah, it's all one year. Yeah, it's all one year. It'll give you a baseline. It'll give the borough council a baseline of where we stand financially with the fire department. That's what it's going to do. Okay. It's been first and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The next part for the fire department, I've already showed you the ARPA chart. Uh, the finance committee recommends the council they approve $45,000 per fire station out of 2022 ARPA funds with a total of $135,000. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, passed. Parking fine increase. They talked about that also at the Finance Committee meeting for the cost and fee schedule. They would like to see the parking fine increase from five dollars to ten dollars. Isn't that a little premature until we find out what we're going to do with the parking meters? Yes, but it'll go on the cost and fee schedule too. Um, they're going to have parking meters. If you don't have to vote on it tonight, but they recommended it be done because of the cost and fee schedule. Um, because you're right with the with the new parking meters probably coming in. We don't know where they're going yet. Maybe it's just Main Street. I don't know because it costs a lot of money. The other key piece on that, Venus, and I know you're hitting the nail on the head, we don't have anybody to enforce it. And so that's one of the open positions right now that we're holding off on hiring until we figure out what we are doing with the parking meters. And that's in conjunction with the parking authority, too. You're exactly right. So if you want to hold off, we can. It's council decision. Do you want to vote on it or hold off? Do so I have a motion to hear you? We can hear you. What's that, Eddie? Can you make it contingent on when we get the new meters in? Could we do it when we get the new meters? Yeah. I you want to wait till we get the new meters, Eddie? We can do that. Let's just wait till we get the new meters. All right. Yeah, because we're, we're probably not going to hire a, a, a uh, meter made until we get. <coughs> You know, something fixed up down there. Roger that. All right. Another item here for the cost and fee schedule. Um, I have that on here as well. The sewer calculations. Be 85 89 per quarter per user and $2.17 or two dollars and seventeen cents per 1,000 gallons of water. It's gone up slightly for 2022. What was it before? Uh, it was, <coughs> hey, Ben, do you remember what it was? Dawn. Or Dawn, I'm sorry. Do you remember what the... the <laughs> no, I don't remember. I, no. It was like, it's gone up like three bucks. I don't remember what it was. It's not much. <coughs> it's 
So what you do is a sewer rate ordinance. I can advertise that for next month. If okay. That's what you want us to do. So what would did they? Did we pay? Did we pay Frank Barry or anything to figure that out? Negative. He, he feels sorry for me because I don't have a treasurer and people to do this. So he came to see me. So he did it for nothing. So do they vote on this, or you, you do it first and then they vote on it once you do it? Okay, okay got it. So I'll put the line. Got it. Okay, well, that's the next month. Yep. All right. Deputy Borough Manager, Treasurer Contract. We'll talk about that in executive session. Deputy DPW, the wastewater treatment plant maintenance technician, the three working positions. Those are just the... You've already given permission to advertise for them. What we need is actual permission to hire them. So we can talk about an executive session or, or, or not. But we'll go to executive session, talk about personnel issues, then we'll come back out. Number 14 is suspension of the street sweeper ordinance. Basically, it's the, uh, those four streets below that uh, should be suspended from accepted from the ordinance from 20 November to 17 April 2022, which means they got to move their vehicles at that time. Am I correct, Ben? Correct. We didn't advertise it. Uh, I, I think we did something like this. We talked about it. In November's meeting, we talked about it. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I think what happened is at the end of the meeting, you simply made an announcement that the borough was suspending the street sweeper operation. Correct. It was never officially acted on by the council in and of itself. There was no motions made. It was never approved. Historically, these, um, the main drags through the town, are exceptions to this. In order for sewer removal crews to get in there, especially around the businesses and things like that, um, having purpose to town. I know Nelson had some rather candid conversations in the in the finance committee about the meeting about this. Is you could see where the vehicles are not following the regulations. It's very apparent. Um, by listing these streets as exceptions, it gives the police department the authority to ticket them. Um, so I'm question why Academy Hill is on there. It's really narrow. I was, so at this point, we're just taking the garbage trucks to the top of the hill and actually legging the bags you know, down to the truck. It also gives the residents that may be serviced by oil or propane, they know that there won't be vehicles parked there so they can have their, their deliveries placed earlier in the day. If you look at the ordinance, um, typically the, the street maintenance is from 11 p.m. until 7 a.m. It's specifically written on, on a four Academy Hill from 11 p.m. until 11 a.m. So if you do need an oil delivery, you do need the refuse and the recycling picked up, we're there before that time. So like I said, it also gives the chief and his crew the ability to go up there. If they're on, you know, busy all night long, they can still get up there in the morning right first thing and, you know, hit those people, give them those tickets to get them out of the way. I think, again, it's one of those things you get them once or twice and, and they're going to learn their lesson on it. So I think what you do is approve this and you post it on our website. I thought this was in our ordinance. No, it's just I don't think the exception is. just announced it right here. Yeah, it's just a, for the borough wide, but not this piece here about that's the, the streets are accepted for it. <clears throat> I have a motion to accept this. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the next thing that we have to discuss is the issue that Chastity brought forth before this meeting about the resolution for the CDGB monies. Um, so we need to a vote to add it to the agenda to discuss it. I'll make the motion we add it to the agenda for discussion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So for discussion, as you were you heard earlier, there's a resolution, and I can pull it up, basically that states this is what happened with the money for the borough, CDGB, and this is what's left uh, after the borough funded this different parts of the fair share projects. And we got the resolution. I just need <coughs> approval of the resolution. Let me find it.
give the approval of the uh, 2020 development block grant CV resolution. Make a motion we approve that. Second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Does it have to be a roll call vote, Mark, for a resolution? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get these signed and get these up to the county. Uh, that was everything I had for new and unfinished business until we go to executive session. Is there any public comments? Yes. When no? is the financial committee meeting that's not on the website? The fourth, uh, the third of every month. So the next one is the 24th of February. So did you say the fourth Thursday? Yeah. Yes. Five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Right here. Any other public comment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, there were about three notations I saw tonight with reference to vacant or deteriorating properties. Mm -hmm. And Kim, do you remember that number you put up there as the, far as a placeholder for vacant? I cannot see. I put thirty thousand up there. Thirty thousand. <laughs> Only 30,000. Oh, it's ever been. Okay. Well, we, you know, uh, considering what's happening on the point, you know, that's 300,000 plus 30. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about how, um, well, I, I, I guess I want to ask, what, what is your vision for the point? once the demolition is, is complete. Do you have an idea of what? Yeah, it's going to be an open space for right now until the council decides if they want to do anything with it. But it's not going to be any structure on it at, best, at this time. Okay. It's going to be an open cleanup space. That, that's an extremely important gateway into, into the community. We need to look at it very purposefully, similar to what we did with the <coughs> five points, you know, working with the We don't community. need another five points. Oh, okay. okay. So then we got to think about what do we want in there? And it could just fall into a vacant lot that, you know, is going to be overgrown. It could, it could have parking. It could have a whole number of things. What I'm seeing in town, um, you know, we're on the cusp of a, just kind of a renaissance, a huge renaissance. And we need to have all of the incentives in place. And I know we're going to be discussing LERDA uh, in the very near future. And, you know, I'm going to be going to bat for the borough to say that, you know, you guys are on board to look at incentives for not just commercial, but also residential. And having these things in place um, is extremely important. Uh, we talked about I and I issues. Whenever we do a facade rehab, when we leave that property, it's addressed as far as any infiltration or, uh, you know, inflow issues. So, you know, by working on these, these things incrementally really makes a difference. And, um, you know, my 22 years here, I've never seen what is possible. And, uh, again, looking at the incentives that, that we could, have, uh, could put in place for developers, I'm talking to developers all the time. And, um, you know, that is a crucial uh, point as people come into town. And we need to deliberately you know, look at what's going to happen there and not just let something happen. So um, I'm going to be continue, <laughs> continuing to come to council and, con you know, continue to talk with you. When's the demolition start on that? Um, I, I, Lucas isn't here. I'm not sure. I think he was saying, and don't quote me, I think he was saying April, April or April, April or May. It all depends on when the, uh, yeah, he's correct. the bids come back. Is that correct? That's correct. That's what the guy, the goal is right now. Okay. You know, um, but we can't we can't demolish our way out of this. We have deteriorated, blighted properties. You know, we we talk. Uh, you know, Kerry talks about the, the issues potentially in, in deteriorated properties. Um, as a part of what we're doing with the demolition, we needed to look at a blight plan, and we at least had the semblance of one when we put it in. But I think we need to build upon that. You know. Deb, you've been looking at that. Uh, I, I think we have everything aligned, both with the, with the county, 
with what the borough is considering and also townships, you know, um, to be able to address that very seriously. So I'll I'll be beating the drum. <laughs> no doubt about it. Hey Jim, there's nothing wrong with that. You're right. We got to put some thought into it. Right now, our goal is getting torn down and getting it cleaned up and leaving it alone until we decide what's going to happen with it. Now, when I say leave it alone, I'm talking about grass, bench, something like that. You know, it's going to be maintained. It's just not going to be a vacant lot of gravel. I I I was looking at it from a standpoint that you know, let's not do a lot of improvement to it. Right. Correct. So hopefully we see the development take place, and we had some, uh, you know, some ideas in place, and you know, developing that corner is very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. <coughs> We're going to go into executive session now. <coughs> <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.